Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zohar, I work at Red Hat, and uh, I want to introduce to you a package I wrote for handling errors, specifically designed for web services. Okay, so I only have 10 minutes, I can't get into all the concepts of error handling, so I'm going to recommend this great uh, lecture by Dave Cheney. Uh, it's called Don't Just Check Errors, Handle Them Gracefully. And uh, my work is mostly based on those concepts. Okay, so in Red Hat, I work on a web service called OpenShift Cluster Manager. Uh, it allows our customers to spin up new uh, OpenShift clusters, which are basically Kubernetes clusters, and manage them. So it basically exposes a RESTful API for managing clusters. So let's look at this use case where a user tries to get a cluster using its ID. Okay, so if we look at a web service architecture, any web service, it's going to be built in, in a certain manner. So on top we'll have the HTTP handlers layer. This uh, layer uh, checks the endpoint, validates the parameters, does some uh, marshalling from uh, JSON and marshalling of all the data. Then the data goes into a service layer where we validate the logic. Maybe we access external services like an authenticator or uh, we access Kubernetes. Um, and sometimes we also have a data, data access layer to manage our data. Um, so in the example we've shown where we try to get a cluster, let's assume this cluster does not exist, the uh, request will go all the way down to the database and the database will return the error that the cluster is not found. So what the, pro what the service will return is SQL, no rows in results yet. Now there are a few problems with that error message. For one thing, this goes to the user. We don't want our user to know that we're using SQL. Why should the user care how we implement our database? Second, what does no rows in results set mean? I mean, I could be uh, implementing this in many, going through many tables. This has no uh, context of cluster or whatever. So what we would like from an error handling package is to be able to return a user-friendly error that has use for the user, which is separate from the error that I would also like to log uh, for developers. Uh, we'd like to attach an appropriate HTTP code from any layer. Uh, here, a 404 not found would be suitable. Um, sometimes we'd like to override an error code set by a previous layer, and we'll get to that. Uh, I'll show an example. Also, sometimes we'd like to add some additional data to the error. And finally, log a stack for the developer that might debug the code. So, I'm not going to get the best price for copywriting, web handling, error handling, Weber. Okay, so uh, I did a lot of research online. Uh, there are a lot of error handling package. Most used is the package errors by Dave. Um, and um, I finally, I couldn't find something that had all I needed, so I had to build it. Uh, I used this, uh, I found some ideas in the blog I mentioned here, and basically Weber is based on package errors. It adds a few things. It adds an error type, it adds a user-specific message, and it adds an empty interface to attach details to it. So, um, error types are basically all the H common HTTP types from uh, the RFC, all the 400s, all the 500s. Then uh, we use the error type as a type receiver, and we have ERF and RAPF, which you probably know from package errors. Uh, we also have user ERF, which attaches a user message, and user RAPF, which is it just wraps the user message with another message. Um, 
add details allow adding any arbitrary data to the error and set allows overriding the uh, error type okay we have the same API without the type receivers basically this either applies the no type on a new error or leaves the existing type of the error that be, that is being wrapped let's look at an example so um, those are actual examples from our service so let's look at uh, getting a cluster that does not exist so if the cluster does not exist we would like to first attach the type not found and then generate a user error saying cluster ID X does not exist so let's go up the stack to the HTTP handlers layer in the HTTP handlers layer we call the the function from the service layer get cluster ID now when it fails we have no idea why it failed so I'm gonna attack the prefix I failed to get the cluster could be a, a number of reasons and uh, the error library will wrap this with the previous error what it would look like uh, basically you can see the error code 404 and the reason fail to get cluster cluster 1 2 3 4 5 doesn't exist okay let's look at another use case so in this use case we uh, approach an external service called the authentication service to check if a user is authorized to access the cluster uh, Authentication service has a specific logic. It returns 403. This is forbidden. The user is not um, allowed to watch this to to get this cluster. Now, in my service logic, if the user is not allowed to to even uh, watch the cluster, I actually don't want the user to even know the cluster exists. So I want to override the error code, and I'm going to do it with set. I'm setting a not found error code to the error. This override the previous error code. Uh, last, I want to show you how to attach additional details to an error. This is a, uh, when we try to provision a new cluster. Uh, we usually check the user if the user has quota to to uh, to create the new cluster. So in this case, the user is not authorized to create the cluster because they don't have enough quota. They access all their quota. So we want uh, to let the user know all the resources they already accessed and why they don't have quota. So we are attaching this cluster resource list to the error by using add details. Thank you. Okay, uh, so what do we do with all this data that we attach to the error? Because this, is, this could be a simple error. We want to somehow extract this data. So we have all the getters here. Uh, all those getters work uh, the same way they check if the uh, error if, if the error implements the behavior and then they return the specific data so if we have a stack trace on the error we'll get it otherwise we'll get a, an empty string user message we either get it or an empty string get type or no type and get details will return now if it's not implemented and last I want to show you how we use it in our hand, HTTP handler so first we get the type that that sits in the HTTP handlers layer this is the error handler any error gets here first we check the type if this is an internal error type or no type we would like to log the error for the developer it's probably not meant for the user to see so we log it the error with the stack trace um, otherwise or in any case we have to return something for the user we return the code to our uh, error formatter and the user message and if there are details we're attaching it to the error body and we send the error to the user so let's recap we return a user-friendly error we can return appropriate HTTP code override the error code of a previous layer return additional data and log an error stack for the developers so this is open source uh, you can just get it and can contribute to it, can contact me if you have questions, that's all.